Yeah, so I screwed up yesterday. Don't worry, you don't need to remind me about it anymore. Yesterday, I made a video talking about the Edmonton Oilers and the Chicago Blackhawks. That video was recorded the night of July 11th, and we spoke about the rumors that Elliot Friedman dropped saying that the Blackhawks trying to trade Duncan Keith, who in my opinion is a negative asset. He's not that good of a defenseman as he was before. He's still getting paid as if he was that kind of defenseman. He gets that money for two more years, and he is old to boot. He's got all this negative stuff going on about him, and the Chicago Blackhawks were asking for assets. Valuable property and players from the Oilers in a trade where they would not retain salary. And yesterday's video that was recorded on July 11th was like, yeah, the Blackhawks are dumb. Are you kidding me? You're going to go out there and ask for this stuff without even thinking about retaining salary? No wonder the Oilers are going to go out there with a do or die kind of deal because of course they're going to be pissed off with the amount of stuff the Blackhawks are asking for. But dude, after I recorded this video in the night, after I made the thumbnail, after after I uploaded it before I go to bed and after I pre-scheduled all the tweets and whatnot, the trade actually gets made. And what more? The video comes out like 25 minutes after the trade. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is why. This is why in every single video talking about rumors and whatnot for trades, I always say, at the time of me recording this video, because I'm recording it the day before, at the time, at this moment, when I'm speaking to you on the mic, it hasn't happened yet, because this is the case, and because Chicago, in my opinion, was dumb for asking about all this stuff. But Edmonton, dude, oh, why do you have to go out there? and make me look like a fool. I thought Chicago was dumb for asking about it. You guys are even dumber for going out there with this kind of trade. Ken Holland, bro. Caleb Jones a third. And no salary retained on the Duncan Keith coming back. Are you kidding me? Duncan Keith is going to be 38 years old in like, what, half a week? He's going to be 38. He's still making five point something million dollars a season until 2023. He wanted to go to you guys. He's got family out here in Penticton. He wants to see his boy. Now, I get it. The children thing, it's really unfortunate. Duncan Keith said he only saw his eight-year-old son Colton once in a five-month stretch because of the border restrictions. That is really unfortunate for a guy who definitely wants to be there for his family and see his kids growing up, etc. I get it. Don't worry. I get that. But he wanted to go to you. You had all the leverage, Ken Holland. You had all the rights to say, okay, well, what are you going to do? If we don't make this trade with you, Stan Bowman, you're going to trade him somewhere else? He only wants to go to here in Seattle. Seattle doesn't even have any assets on their roster at the moment. You got no choice but to send your guy over to here. So you're going to play by our rules. You're not going to get this trade done without retaining salary on an expensive guy who is old and who gets paid that amount of money for a few more years. Edmonton and Ken Holland, they have all the rights to go out there and say, yeah, we're putting our foot down. This is it. We're not going to add on anything else. But no, it's Caleb Jones and a third round pick. Oh, no. Stan Bowman, man, honestly, like, congrats. Not only did you free yourself with the Keith contract, but you got a pick out of it. And it's not like Caleb Jones is a bad player either. Sure, I get he's a tweener guy. I get that Seth Jones is the big fish that you really want to get over to Chicago, which is why you got Caleb, because you want to reunite the brothers. But still, you're getting a serviceable NHL caliber-ish defenseman in return for what is an albatross of a contract gone and the third round pick on top of that. Fantastic. It gets really bad when you see Chicago Blackhawks fans everywhere saying, really? We didn't retain salary? We got a draft pick out of this guy? Crazy. I get that there's a whole Duncan Keith sentimental value to the Blackhawks. Oh, he played a thousand games with the Blackhawks and he had like a hundred something playoff games and he averaged 25 minutes a night throughout his time here. He had 600 points as well. Three Stanley Cups, a Conn Smythe, two gold medals and whatnot. I get that there's a lot of value there and I get that there's so much sentimentality behind this guy. But when you have Blackhawks fans saying, wow, I can't believe we we got this haul for this guy, I thought we would have retained salary. That's kind of the point where you look at Ken Holland and you say, how the heck did you do this in this way? Sure, okay, acquire Duncan Keith for Caleb Jones. Make your blue line technically better. But you're taking on such a big contract, you're giving up a draft pick, and 
All the negotiations were so public. He wanted to go to you. Why did you not use your leverage? Either way, though, Chicago, good on you guys. Edmonton, I thought you guys were in a position of power, but you just ended up blowing it. Ah, man. I get that there are going to be so many people out there saying, oh, Duncan Keith is a leader, he's technically better than Caleb Jones, and yada yada yada. Leadership, leadership, leadership. And while there is an intrinsic value in that kind of thing, you're judging this based off of intangibles that are not calculated with numbers. You know what is calculated with numbers? Salary. Years. Contract lengths. And draft picks. And I guess if you want to go even deeper with the numbers, hey, Duncan Keith's analytical profile is really bad. This is not the same guy that was going out there getting 50, 60 points a season. He's a lot worse now, and there's a reason Blackhawks fans are like, wow, I can't believe we didn't retain salary, because this is not a player that's worth $5.5 million a season, especially until he's going to be 39 and eventually like 40. Oh, boy. Edmonton, man. It's kind of weird to be on this side of the fence right now, because as a Vancouver Canucks fan, I cannot believe that another NHL Pacific general manager would make a trade like this. Because for the first time in forever, we're not the laughingstocks when it comes to trades. It's not us. It's not Vancouver making like a JT Miller trade. And I get the JT Miller trade was fantastic, but it was high risk. And a lot of people were questioning Jim Benning when it was made. It's not good Branson and McCann and all that. It's not the trades that the Vancouver Canucks have made that have caused them to be seen as, oh my goodness, what are you doing kind of trades. Highmore, Gaudette, those kinds of moves. It's Edmonton this time. Kenny Holland, bro. You've come out here. You've honestly done a pretty okay job with the Oilers, but this trade, my goodness, this trade. This is a big one, guys. Like, you talk about the memes. The meme has become, over the past few seasons in Edmonton, oh, it was one for one because Taylor Hall and Adam Larson was a thing that happened that was one for one. But the joke here now, oh, it's a different one. Three different words. No salary retained. Edmonton, man. Edmonton, man, you go out there, you make me look like a fool by making the trade a few minutes before my own video is posted, and I get it, it's not your fault. It's my fault for being an absolute clown and making videos the day before, like I have been the past year and a bit. But you know what? It's so bad this time that I had to make a follow-up, you know? Just another video here, talking about the Oilers, talking about the reception. I wanted to bring you over to NHL Rumors Daily over here. This is the Twitter account that I'm always saying is, like, one of the best when it comes to... NHL insider information because for some reason even though this account isn't verified it's not official it's not anything the guy who runs this account knows his stuff and he has gosh darn sources that are in the NHL despite the fact that this guy has no name no face no nothing this is a tweet he posted back on July 3rd he has been told that Jones and a pick is what the parameters of the Keith to Edmonton trade has been discussed not across that finish line yet though. So, taking a look at this insider info kind of tweet right here, Jones and a pick is what the parameters are. And then you see the Sarah Bailey notice saying, okay, the Oilers have a do it or leave it kind of deal in place with the Blackhawks that the Blackhawks are just going to have to accept if they want to make this trade go through. You have Friedman saying, yeah, the Blackhawks were talking about McLeod and you had Ethan Bear in there as well and it wasn't going through because they don't want to give up those players. But now... A few days later and 25 gosh darn minutes before my video talking about how the trade was rejected gets published, the actual trade gets done. This is what NHL Rumors Daily said. Now I'm in a mood. Give me my darn credit because they called it. Again, I've said this before. This Twitter account, they call a lot of things before stuff even happens. A lot of stuff that even Elliot Friedman ends up saying as well later on after this Twitter account says it initially. So... You know, it's crazy how things work in the NHL Insider Twitter world, I guess. But talk to me in the comments about the Edmonton Oilers, Duncan Keith, no salary retained, Caleb Jones, third round pick trade. I still can't believe it got done because I didn't think Edmonton would screw it up that badly. But I hope you enjoyed this video. So that shows an I9. One more thing before we go, though. If Duncan Keith becomes fantastic again, if he goes out there, gets 70 points, then okay, I'll eat my words right here, and I'll say that I was wrong. But the way that I'm viewing this right now, the way that a bunch of people are viewing this right now, yeah, doesn't really seem like that great of a move on paper, doesn't it? I hope you enjoyed this video. I shows an I9. And bye.